Augusta here from the new face of finance. It has taken at least a week to gear up to film this video. So this is the 20 weeks of my pregnancy. In fact, I'm going into 21 weeks and it's been quite eventful. So a few weeks back, on my last video, you may remember that I had a suspected bladder or urine infection. I got a call from my midwife uh, around week 16, 17, and basically just asking how I am. And I explained that I thought I had this infection down there. And she said, well, you know, you can just pop into the, uh, the daycare, the day centre, they call it. Um, which is in a maternity ward over at the hospital in Margate and talk to them about any issues that you might have. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take her up on this offer. So the following Saturday after her and I had spoken, after a workout, it wasn't a workout that I was used to. Uh, it was a third trimester, it was a second trimester workout, it was a third trimester workout, I think it was. Um, and and there was a disclaimer at the start, which was like, speak to your doctor before you do this workout. And I was like, gosh, I've been working out my whole pregnancy. How rigorous can it really be for a third trimester workout when I'm in my second trimester? Anyway, after the workout, these crazy pelvic pains returned. So uh, I decided to go to the day center. So after about four nights of getting up five times a night with these immense pains, finally, popped into the day clinic. Now there are some awful realities about living in Margate, but there actually are lots of amazing things and access to maternity advice and support is one of the great things about being in Margate. When I was in London, I often felt like GPs, doctors, medical professions, that also run off their feet that they don't really have time to sit and talk to you, really understand what's going on. So they ran some urine tests and verbal questionnaire and one of the midwives got this machine and was checking the heartbeat of baby. And after all this analysis, they actually told me that what I'm suffering from is a condition known as pelvic girdle pain. PGP was what was likely to be the reason for all my discomfort because they didn't find any results of an infection in my urine um, and everything seemed to be fine, baby sounds healthy. The pain was predominantly in the pelvic area. Uh, so they explained, they gave me a leaflet and explained that this was something that was relatively common in pregnant women. And I was like, well, it seems a bit early. Doesn't this normally appear in like the seventh, eighth month of pregnancy as you get heavier? And uh, this amazing doctor there, um, and his supporting midwife, basically explained that no, it could appear from like week six of pregnancy. And in fact, some women, it gets so bad that they were walking on crutches or they end up in a wheelchair. So I have to keep an eye on it. Doesn't really impact health of the baby, but will have some impact on the quality of my life. And I've definitely felt that. The pain was literally so excruciating. It's like all I could think about sometimes. And then one night, as I was trying to get into a comfortable position, click, something happened and the pain started to subside a little bit. Now it kind of comes in swathes and then it leaves. So I'll have a good couple of weeks where I feel okay. And then I'll have a couple of days where it feels really intense. I'm struggling to sleep, find a comfortable position. After speaking with the doctor and the midwives, I went and bought a pregnancy belt um, and I tried to wear that when there was some pain and then it would feel okay for a few minutes and then it wouldn't feel so good. Again, spoke to my midwife about this and they suggested that actually um, the pregnancy belt might become more useful in the later stages of the pregnancy. I've also noticed that the pain seems to come back 
quite heavily once I've had quite a lot of activity. Now, working out doesn't count. If I just go and do my standard normal workout, I actually feel really good afterwards. But it's finding the energy to do the workouts, that's the hard thing. In any case, that's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about movements. So, for example, my cousins came to visit me the other day. I thought I'd get some shopping in. My husband, Nick, was out working on turning over some of the houses between guests. So I thought I'd just go to the shops and I brought a suitcase so I wouldn't have to carry anything too heavy. And then uh, my cousins also met me halfway. I mean, the supermarket isn't far from my home anyway. And they met me halfway and helped me to uh, bring some of the bags in. And then for the next couple of days, there was quite a lot of pain in the pelvic region. Similarly, last weekend, went to visit my business partner uh, at his family home. We had a, a staff uh, social uh, reunion. Uh, I say reunion, some of them I'd only met for the first time physically. We'd been having Zoom meetings up until then. And uh, the car was out of action. It was a very busy Saturday. Nick couldn't come with me. So I took a taxi to the station and took a train to Ashwood and I was picked up by my business partner and then uh, reversed on the way back. And it took me literally two days to recover from that few hours out. Like, and when I say recover, the intense pelvic pain. And then on top of that, now I've got 20 week nausea. So yeah, all the books and blogs and everything that I'd read had told me that nausea should pretty much disappear by week 13, 14. It carried on for me into week 15, 16, subsided somewhat, and now it's back with a vengeance. And in fact, it feels worse than like the first trimester. And the reason why is because the first trimester, there's this constant lingering nausea and you think you might be sick. I was only actually sick like once. But I've actually been sick nearly every day in the lead up to this video. Just take that's why it's taking me so long to sit in front of the camera. I've just not been able to hold any food down. My appetite has pretty much disappeared. It's been super tough. And I was worried about this. Uh, but then I looked at some, uh, I went on Mum's Net and read it. And there's a couple of articles there. And about one in 10 women will continue suffering nausea well after you know the first trimester um into the second and maybe into the third i had a late there was a couple of ladies who were like oh i was puking up the day i gave birth gosh i mean i did not think pregnancy was going to be this hard it's really hard especially when you're trying to balance this with like other with, with businesses with clients who call you up and i'm not disclosing oh i'm having a baby because I don't want my clients thinking, okay, well, is she going to have the time to do business to a good standard? Do I need to be looking at other brokers, or other partners? I just don't have that. And I'm generally quite a private person anyway. So it's not something that I'm disclosing publicly. I'm just dealing with amongst family and friends and then my staff. I told my staff the week before we met uh, just because I thought it was best for them to be warned not too much physical contact, please. And also, I'm going to be walking like a penguin, so expect that. We did have a 20-week scan of baby, and the midwife asked me if I um, want to know the sex of the baby. I mean, I should know, actually, that um, unfortunately, during these COVID periods, Nick, my husband, has not actually even been in to the scan rooms with me. They're not letting any partners in or anything. But anyway, while I was in there and she was scanning and it was an abnormality check more than anything, um, from what she could see, baby's size and uh, shape looked totally fine. Strong spine, good stomach, good shape of head um, and straight arms and legs. So baby looks pretty healthy despite everything that I'm going through. So I'm super grateful to God um, for that, I'm willing to suffer for the sake of my baby i guess this is when it starts and it carries on till you die what i did say to her regarding the sex of the baby was please can you write it on a piece of paper and put it in an envelope and she was like no we put it on your records or you don't know and i was like all right chill so i'm thinking what to do with that we don't really want to know the sex right now we're thinking about having like a gender reveal stroke baby shower stroke thing I don't know, it depends how the next few months pan out, getting one, everyone over here. And my mum gave me, some, my mum told me some story about some Mexican lady who had a baby shower and then contracted COVID-19 and the baby survived and she didn't, which has kind of put me off 
having a baby shower but at the same time it's my first baby seems quite unfair that i don't get to celebrate it so jury's still out i know for, i know nick's mum my mother-in-law she definitely is hoping that we have a baby shower but we'll just have to see how it pans out really i guess i'll be able to give you more information in the next video my auntie my mum's little sister she's super cute she called me up today to pray with me um she thinks i'm totally blessed by god i feel blessed generally i feel blessed um but she's called me up because she'd heard that i'd been sick uh for the last few weeks last few days which is really nice it was very comforting to pray with her over the phone so i've been working really really hard to stick to vegan wednesday my appetite has pretty much diminished um because of the pgp pain um and also still feeling a bit tired and just feeling a bit too sick to cook however um after the pgp diagnosis uh, nick and i were out and i figured it was vegan wednesday so i was like okay i am gonna go to burger king and get an impossible burger so we went to the burger king drive through in margate um and inquired about the impossible burger and they were basically like yeah we've got no vegetarian options again one of the crappy things about being in margate that there aren't enough vegetarians that burger king will bother to keep their vegetarian options open so they did not just have the impossible burger at bk they had like no options at all which i thought was absolutely ridiculous so instead we went to subway and there is a meatless meatball mariana and i thought i'd give that a go again struggling with food that evening I took a bite of the meatless meatball mariana and thought oh my gosh this is disgusting why the hell did i order a foot long so yeah left it to the side had a couple of fruits before bed but then the next day i tasted it again and it didn't taste that bad so i did eat it but i thought to myself yeah i'm not gonna rush out and buy this again i'm gonna find another way to be vegan probably didn't help that i also ordered some large fries and a large strawberry milkshake from mcdonald's uh, to support my uh my subway sandwich and then after scoffing down the chips and the milkshake it dawned on me that actually uh the milkshake probably doesn't count as vegan because it probably had milk in it and i normally hate the milk that comes out of cows but love a strawberry milkshake from mcdonald's uh made me realize especially if you are someone who's into fast food um and you know not the best cook in the world it's actually really really tough to be vegan uh one day a week at the moment is is enough of a commitment you know um struggling to eat as it is uh, let alone trying to keep make it vegan especially uh with a husband who's not <laughs> who's, who's, who's not the most vegan minded person i think it's more at the moment um vegetarian wednesday than vegan wednesday but i'm gonna keep it up i'm gonna keep it up and hopefully uh we'll achieve this and maybe roll it out into more days anyway uh thank you for watching and i'll catch you on the next catch up